only a few know that each brick of the Great Wall went through 37 processing steps, and only a few know that each rivet of the Eiffel Tower took more than 20 hours of grinding and polishing. Technology is like the bricks of the Great Wall and the rivets of the Eiffel Tower. You don't need to understand its complexity. Technology should be easy to use, plug and play, a simple brick, a handy rivet. This is Tencent Cloud today. We simplify complex technology, help to flexibly combine technology and business modules. We build big accomplishments from little things, support discretionary access to existing networks, and inject new momentum into business growth. Let Tencent Cloud be your partner, shape a more flexible, efficient, and refined business landscape, connect to unlimited possibilities. This is where it all begins. Simplicity from complexity. The details of greatness. Tencent Cloud. Berawal dari bagian barat Indonesia. Kami datang sebagai sahabat. Membawa beragam kisah dari sudut pandang setiap daerah. Untuk menjadi mata lokal menjangkau Indonesia. Still manually enter ID numbers for online businesses? Still use humans to review and filter non-compliant text in images and videos? Tencent Cloud Optical Character Recognition, OCR, can intelligently recognize words in images and convert them into editable text. It features high accuracy, stability, adaptability, ease of use, and applicability. It is divided into three major categories. 1. General Text Recognition. It can detect and recognize printed and handwritten text in multiple scenarios and languages. 2. Document Recognition. It can recognize text in various documents such as ID card, bank card and business license. 3. Form Recognition. It can recognize text in various forms. It also offers a rich set of value-added services for diversified uses cases helping organizational customers reduce the labor costs and improve the work efficiency. As technology rapidly progresses, online meetings have become a major trend. Tencent Cloud Conference, TCC, is suitable for exhibitions, forums, speeches, business negotiations and more. It digitalizes the entire traditional conference experience, allowing events to be conducted and attended online. Tencent Cloud Conference, empowering your future. Tencent Cloud Conference, TCC, is suitable for exhibitions, forums, speeches, business negotiations and more. It digitalizes the entire traditional conference experience, allowing events to be conducted and attended online. TCC provides each exhibitor with a management console that allows online booth customization for offline exhibitions and online virtual exhibitions. Live streams support over 500,000 concurrent viewers with smooth broadcasting to over 200 countries and regions. Smart AI translation and real-time subtitling for video conferences. Recognize and translate Chinese and English, smoothing cross-language communication. Business matching and negotiation system enables business negotiations, supply and procurement matching for different parties. You can initiate an online meeting with a single click to facilitate deal making. Tencent Cloud Conference, empower your future. Only a few know that each brick of the Great Wall went through 37 processing steps, and only a few know that each rivet of the Eiffel Tower took more than 20 hours of grinding and polishing. Technology is like the bricks of the Great Wall and the rivets of the Eiffel Tower. 
you don't need to understand its complexity. Technology should be easy to use. Plug and play. A simple brick. A handy rivet. This is Tencent Cloud today. We simplify complex technology. Help to flexibly combine technology and business modules. We build big accomplishments from little things. Support discretionary access to existing networks and inject new momentum into business growth. Let Tencent Cloud be your partner. Shape a more flexible, efficient, and refined business landscape. Connect to unlimited possibilities. This is where it all begins. Simplicity from complexity. The details of greatness. Tencent Cloud. Berawal dari bagian barat Indonesia. Kami datang sebagai sahabat. Membawa beragam kisah dari sudut pandang setiap daerah untuk menjadi mata lokal menjangkau Indonesia. Still manually enter ID numbers for online businesses? Still use humans to review and filter non-compliant text in images and videos? Tencent Cloud Optical Character Recognition, OCR, can intelligently recognize words in images and convert them into editable text. It features high accuracy, stability, adaptability, ease of use, and applicability. It is divided into three major categories. 1. General Text Recognition It can detect and recognize printed and handwritten text in multiple scenarios and languages. 2. Document Recognition It can recognize text in various documents such as ID card, bank card and business license. 3. Form Recognition It can recognize text in various forms. It also offers a rich set of value-added services for diversified uses cases helping organizational customers reduce the labor costs and improve the work efficiency. As technology rapidly progresses, online meetings have become a major trend. Tencent Cloud Conference, TCC, is suitable for exhibitions, forums, speeches, business negotiations and more. It digitalizes the entire traditional conference experience, allowing events to be conducted and attended online. Tencent Cloud Conference. Empower your future. Only a few know that each brick of the Great Wall went through 37 processing steps. And only a few know that each rivet of the Eiffel Tower took more than 20 hours of grinding and polishing. Technology is like the bricks of the Great Wall and the rivets of the Eiffel Tower. You don't need to understand its complexity. Technology should be easy to use. Plug and play. A simple brick. A handy rivet. This is Tencent Cloud today. We simplify complex technology. Help to flexibly combine technology and business modules. We build big accomplishments from little things. Support discretionary access to existing networks and inject new momentum into business growth. Let Tencent Cloud be your partner. Shape a more flexible, efficient, and refined business landscape. Connect to unlimited possibilities. This is where it all begins. Simplicity from complexity. The details of greatness. Tencent Cloud. As technology rapidly progresses, online meetings have become a major trend. Tencent Cloud Conference, TCC, is suitable for exhibitions, forums, speeches, business negotiations, and more. It digitalizes the entire traditional conference experience, allowing events to be conducted and attended online. Tencent Cloud Conference, empowering your future. Berawal dari bagian barat Indonesia, kami datang sebagai sahabat. Membawa beragam kisah dari sudut pandang setiap daerah untuk menjadi mata lokal menjangkau Indonesia.
Hai, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam damai sejahtera bagi kita semua. Shalom, Om Swastiastu, Namu Budaya, dan Salam Kebajikan. Sungguh sebuah kebahagiaan yang luar biasa, saya, Febi Mahendra Putra, dapat menjadi host di acara Tension Cloud Tribune Series hari ini. Bertajuk Capitalizing on Growth Opportunities in Indonesia Digital Economy Through Data Center Base. I would like to say thank you for the trust that has been given by Tension Cloud to Tribunus by hosting the Tension Cloud Tribune Series today, especially for Mr. Kenet Xiao as Regional Director for Tension Cloud at South Asia and Mr. Brandon Fu as a Business Development Lead of Tension Cloud for Singapore and Indonesia who also participate as speaker today. Roadmap Digital Indonesia tahun 2021 sampai 2024 lahir untuk mendorong transformasi digital di Indonesia. Tidak dapat dipungkiri akselerasi digital yang mampu menjangkau setiap sudut Indonesia akan mendorong pertumbuhan ekonomi digital serta memainkan peran penting dalam pembangunan negara pada tahap berikutnya. Saat ekonomi dan bisnis bergerak menuju menuju maju masa depan, serba digital, teknologi fundamental yaitu growth menjadi hal esensial bagi perjalanan transformasi perusahaan. Tension Cloud sebagai perusahaan digital depan, penyedia layanan cloud berkomitmen menjadi mitra bagi pionir bisnis untuk berevolusi dan menghadapi berbagai tantangan di era digital saat ini. Saat ini, Tension Cloud mengoperasikan dua data center di Indonesia dan terhubung dengan 69 availability sound wilayah Asia Tenggara, Tiangkok, dan pada seluruh dunia. Dalam webinar ini, kita akan mengeksplorasi cetak biru informasi digital nasional Indonesia dan mencermati peluang pertumbuhan ekonomi digital di dalamnya. Tidak hanya itu, akan dibahas pula strategi cloud yang dapat membantu para pebisnis melakukan transformasi perusahaan agar menjadi sebuah digital first company, serta mempelajari bagaimana Tension Cloud membantu perusahaan di Indonesia untuk dapat tumbuh secara digital. Selain itu, Bapak-Ibu sekalian yang saya hormati, kita juga akan bagi-bagi hadiah melalui kuis interaktif yang akan kita sampaikan di akhir acara ini. Oleh karena itu, simak sampai akhir acara ini. Ya, Sebelum memasuki acara webinar, saya Febi Mahendra Putra izinkan menyampaikan beberapa pantun berikut ini supaya kita merasa lebih hangat. Pada kesempatan siang dan sore kali ini, ikan paus berenang membelah lautan. Cakep. Pergi ke flores, jangan lupa ke Danau Kelimutu. Cakep. Terima kasih atas kehadiran Tuan dan Puan telah meluangkan kesempatan dan waktu. Kapal berlayar dari Jakarta ke Malaysia. Cakep. Lanjut perjalanan ke Prancis dan Inggris. Cakep. Semoga kehadiran dan Tuan dan Puan tidak sia-sia. Ada sedikit hadiah bagi yang mau menjawab quiz. Untuk selanjutnya, sebagai awal dari acara ini, kita dengarkan bersama sambutan atau speed dari Mr. Kenneth Xiao. Dia adalah Regional Director for Southeast Asia Tension Cloud. Dan beliau nanti akan menyampaikan juga presentasi. Kami persilahkan kepada Mr. Kenneth Xiao untuk menyampaikan sambutan. Please welcome to Mr. Uh, Xiao. Please. Selamat siang, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kenneth Xiao. I'm the Regional Director for Tencent Cloud at Southeast Asia. Thank you for spending time with us today at this Tencent Cloud and Tribune webinar. For the last 20 years, I have been at the driver's seat of IT and digital transformation. I have worked with many world-class companies across industries such as Shell, Intel, Cisco, and Google. And in the last five years, we have seen cloud technologies coming to the forefront of changing the way that we live, the way we work, and the way we play. 
I'm particularly excited about how cloud can be a catalyst for economic and social growth in Indonesia. An amazing nation of 270 million people with a huge youth population and the largest digital economy in Southeast Asia. Hence, we are very excited to be able to talk to you about the role of cloud technologies in driving Indonesia's digital transformation. With my colleague Brendan Fu, who is the Business Development Lead for Indonesia and Singapore, we would like to share insights based on Tencent Cloud's experience and capabilities in running cloud-based businesses on a global scale. Tencent Cloud is very excited to be growing alongside with Indonesia organizations of all sizes as their trusted digital transformation partner. During this session, we will be sharing more about our investment in Indonesia, as well as how we are already working with Indonesia enterprises on their digital journeys. I would like to especially thank Park Usman Kansong, Director General of Information and Public Communication of the Ministry of Communication and Information Technology, as our special speaker today. Thank you, Park. I would also like to thank Park Fabi Mahendra Putra, News Director of the Tribune Network, who is facilitating today's webinar. Thank you, Kasi Park. Thank you so much for helping us. And with that, let's continue the next topic of our agenda today. Thank you. Baiklah, terima kasih atas sambutannya dari Mr. Kenneth Siok. Dan selanjutnya kita ikuti bersama materi dari Direktur Jenderal Komunikasi dan Informasi Publik ya, yang nanti akan disampaikan oleh Pak Usman Kansong. Kepada Pak Usman Kansong, saya persilahkan. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita sekalian, Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. Yang kami hormati, Kenneth Chow, Tencent Cloud, Brandon Fu, Tencent Cloud, Febi Mahendra Putra, News Director, Tribun Network, serta para pembicara, tamu undangan, dan hadirin yang berbahagia. Pertama-tama, marilah kita panjatkan syukur kepada Tuhan Yang Maha Esa, Capitalizing on Growth Opportunities Indonesia's Digital Economy Truth Data Center Base dapat terlaksana dan kita berkesempatan untuk menghadirinya pada hari ini. Perkembangan Big Data di Indonesia dipengaruhi oleh berbagai faktor. Di tataran makro, berkembangnya Big Data secara global dipengaruhi dua faktor utama, yaitu meningkatnya volume data yang dihasilkan secara masif dan peningkatan kapasitas komputasi elektronik di mana cloud computing dan internet of things semakin akrab digunakan oleh masyarakat secara global. Pada level meso, melimpahnya data digital dan penetrasi internet di Indonesia yang semakin mapan juga turut menyumbang lalu lintas data yang signifikan. Pada level mikro, big data banyak digunakan di sektor bisnis. Bisnis konvensional maupun perusahaan rintisan ramai memanfaatkan big data untuk meningkatkan pendapatan, produktivitas, dan menciptakan ide untuk menghasilkan produk baru. Di tahun 2022, diperkirakan terdapat 4,9 miliar pengguna internet dunia, termasuk 204 juta pengguna internet di Indonesia. Terdapat lalu lintas dan konsumsi data sebesar 64,2 zeta bytes di tahun 2020 dan diprediksi bertumbuh tiga kali lipat sebesar 181 zeta bytes di tahun 2025. Global data consumption diproyeksikan bertambah dengan CAGR sebesar 26,9 persen sejak tahun 2020 sampai 2025. Pertumbuhan lalu lintas dan konsumsi data tadi menjadi modal dasar untuk ekosistem digital. Tentu ini perlu didukung dengan kebijakan strategis transformasi digital yang terdiri dari empat pilar utama, yakni pembangunan infrastruktur, pengembangan teknologi, pengembangan talenta digital, dan juga percepatan legislasi serta penguatan hubungan internasional. Di Indonesia kita menggiatkan pembangunan infrastruktur hulu digital atau upstream ICT infrastructure seperti tulang punggung fiber optik, microwave link, high truth, uh, put satellite, dan base transceiver station yang merata di seluruh tanah air. Maupun pembangunan infrastruktur digital hilir, 
atau downstream ICT infrastructure dengan teknologi cloud computing baik rencana pembangunan government cloud atau pusat data nasional dan terus mendorong pembangunan private cloud atau pusat data privat baik oleh perusahaan nasional Indonesia maupun investasi asing. Pembangunan infrastruktur tersebut merupakan jawaban langsung atas kemajuan dan pemanfaatan ruang digital yang terus tumbuh baik di sektor ekonomi, keuangan, perdagangan digital, teknologi pendidikan, teknologi kesehatan, dan pemerintahan digital. Optimalisasi potensi ekonomi digital melalui pembangunan cloud computing dan infrastruktur teknologi informasi dan komunikasi mampu mendorong pertumbuhan ekonomi digital yang signifikan dan inklusif. Seiring berkembangnya peluang bisnis dan investasi big data, banyak masyarakat yang mulai tertarik untuk mendalami profesi data analis, data saintis, dan data engineer. Potensi investasi untuk infrastruktur big data seperti cloud computing dan data center juga meningkat. Saat ini big data di Indonesia lebih banyak digunakan untuk monetisasi data. Berbagai platform yang ada dan berbagai pegiat big data menggunakan big data untuk menyediakan layanan prediksi dan masukan untuk bisnis. Pemerintah melakukan inisiatif untuk mengatur tata kelola mekanisme data yang dibutuhkan oleh para pegiat big data. Sebagai regulator, pemerintah telah mengatur tata kelola pusat data termasuk penggunaan data itu sendiri. Terdapat peraturan Menteri Kominfo nomor 20 tahun 2016 tentang perlindungan data pribadi dan sistem elektronik yang mengatur tentang penggunaan data pribadi dalam transaksi elektronik. Dalam peraturan ini, perlindungan data pribadi dan sistem elektronik dilakukan mulai perolehan dan pengumpulan hingga pemusnahan data pribadi yang mengatur kedua pihak, yaitu pemilik data dan penyelenggara sistem elektronik. Sebelumnya, Singapura, Malaysia, Thailand, dan Filipina sudah mengatur perlindungan data pribadi. Sementara di tingkat dunia, Indonesia bisa menjadi negara ke-127 yang memiliki aturan yang biasa disebut sebagai General Data Protection Regulation atau GDPR. Soal perizinan, mekanisme pembuatan, hak-hak termasuk sanksi yang diatur sudah diatur sebagian di Undang-Undang ITE tahun 2011 dan kemudian diturunkan dalam PP nomor 71 tahun 2019 mengenai penyelenggaraan sistem dan transaksi elektronik. Data yang bersifat strategis dan penting bagi negara wajib ditempatkan di pusat data dalam negeri. Namun ada juga data strategis yang boleh dipertukarkan dengan syarat adanya perjanjian internasional. Misalnya untuk kepentingan memerangi kejahatan pencucian uang atau tindak pidana terorisme secara global. Peraturan Menteri Komunikasi dan Informatika nomor 11 tahun 2018 tentang penyelenggaraan sertifikasi elektronik juga dapat menjadi acuan bagi perusahaan swasta baik dalam negeri maupun luar negeri yang akan membangun pusat data miliknya di wilayah Indonesia. Bapak Ibu hadirin sekalian, pertumbuhan konsumsi data yang besar dan cepat secara masif akan mendorong pembangunan pusat data atau cloud computing dan pertumbuhan ekonomi digital. Di Indonesia, pertumbuhan ekonomi digital terus berkembang dengan gross merchandise value sebesar 70 miliar dolar Amerika Serikat pada 2021 dan diproyeksikan sebesar 315.5 miliar dolar Amerika Serikat pada 2030 berdasarkan data Kementerian Perdagangan tahun 2021. Pemerintah khususnya dalam momentum presidensi G20 Indonesia memandang penting hal ini sehingga secara spesifik pembahasan agenda transformasi berbasis digital menjadi salah satu yang dibahas setidaknya oleh 12 working group dan 10 engagement group di bawah Sherpa Track. Digital Economy Working Group atau DEWG yang diketuai oleh Kementerian Komunikasi dan Informasi akan membahas tiga isu prioritas yaitu connectivity and post-COVID-19 recovery, digital skills and digital literacy, serta cross-border data flow and data free flow with trust. Pada topik ketiga itulah, yakni arus data lintas negara dan arus data bebas secara terpercaya, Indonesia akan memfasilitasi diskusi arus data lintas batas negara termasuk pada upaya penerimaan penerapan prinsip lawfulness, fairness, transparency, dan reciprocity serta menumbuhkan interoperabilitas data dengan membahas tantangan terkait privasi, perlindungan data, keamanan, dan kekayaan intelektual. Hasil yang akan diharapkan melalui pembahasan isu prioritas ini adalah sebuah dialog multi-stakeholders 
yang memfasilitasi identifikasi upaya tata kelola data dari tingkat pemahaman data yang beragam, khususnya di antara negara-negara G20. Saat kita membicarakan arus data lintas batas negara, tiap negara memiliki yurisdiksi tata cara pengelolaan data yang berbeda. Perbedaan ini adalah suatu hal yang natural dikarenakan teknologi digital bersifat borderless, mengalir antar negara. Pemerintah mengupayakan agar melalui presidensi Indonesia di G20 ini tercipta pemahaman yang sama terkait dengan tata kelola data lintas batas negara yang akan menjadi tonggak perjalanan transformasi digital bangsa Indonesia. Hadirin yang saya hormati, transformasi digital di Indonesia menjadi kepentingan dan kebutuhan kita bersama. Apa yang kita upayakan saat ini akan memberikan dampak luas di masa depan sehingga kita perlu bersinergi agar big data dan penggunaannya memberikan nilai positif bagi kemajuan bangsa. Terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera bagi kita sekalian. Om Shanti 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 Om. Namo Buddhaya. Salam Kebajikan. Baik, terima kasih Bapak, Ibu, Saudara, Saudara sekalian. Kita sudah mendengarkan bersama tadi, yaitu pemaparan yang sangat luar biasa dari Pak Usman Kanson. Dia adalah Direktur Jenderal Informasi dan Komunikasi Publik Kementerian Komunikasi dan Informatika Kementerian di Republik Indonesia Tercinta saat ini. Dan selanjutnya Bapak Ibu sekalian, kita akan dengarkan bersama ya pemaparan dari Mr. Kenneth Siong. Ya, tadi beliau membuka, sekarang beliau menyampaikan pemaparan sebagai Regional Director for Southeast Asia Tencent Cloud. Jadi nanti akan beliau akan jelaskan apa dan siapa Tencent Cloud. Kepada Mr. Kenneth Sio, kami persilahkan. Please you welcome Mr. Kenneth Sio. Hi, I'm Ken Xiao, Regional Director for Southeast Asia. And again, very excited to be sharing with all of you how Tencent Cloud is helping Indonesia's enterprises to transform and how we're empowering Indonesia's digital economy. Let me talk a little bit about Tencent and also Tencent Cloud. As all of you may have read, Tencent is one of the largest tech company in the world. We are located or headquartered in Shenzhen, China which is also known as the Silicon Valley of China. We are listed in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, and today we have almost 80,000 employees at a global level. We have a clear mission and a vision of bringing technology to bring that into the goodness of humanity. And we really want to make sure that we're taking value, uh, great value, so that our users can benefit from the usage of technology. We always strive to do business in the, more, in the highest form of integrity and to make sure that we are working with our partners and with our customer in a highly collaborative manner. A little bit about the milestones of Tencent Cloud. Um, some of you, uh, again, who has been following the news have, have also been reading that uh, we are a more than 22 years old company. In fact, we started our journey in 1998. Uh, we have uh, a broad-based set of businesses spanning from entertainment all the way to uh, digital content and now with the cloud business which we have started in 2010 we have now uh, grown from in, in leaps and bounds and today we are the number two player in China and we are the glo we are globally the number five cloud service provider in the world and a little bit about our core portfolio um, we uh, we have an amazing communication and social media tool which is known as WeSing in China and outside of China it is known as WeChat. And around this social media platform, we have started to build a wide range of services including gaming, digital content, fintech, cloud businesses and utility tools. A little bit about our gaming business of course, we have huge experience in the gaming business because we are now the world's largest publisher of games. We're also one of the world's largest publisher of digital content, certainly in China, we, and we are now the number one by subscription base. We're also the number one fintech player in China with our WeChat mobile payment system. And last but not least, in the cloud space, we want to be bringing the best of breed of our technology. 
you know, building on our experience in serving billions of users and bring that to the, the Indonesia enterprise. This will be an interesting chart for you to review. Again, this is not, uh, this, this does not represent all of our products, but this represents in many ways the reach of our products in terms of the everyday life of a netizen in China especially. So if you look at uh, this chart, we have been rolling out our WeChat platform for many years now, and now WeChat has more than 1.2 billion uh, monthly active users, alongside with tools like QQ, alongside with our chat, uh, media, communication, and uh, entertainment solution, spanning from music to literature to video experiences. And now we are taking a lot of this experience into the enterprise world you know, certainly with the likes of WeCom, Tencent Meeting, Tencent Docs, and other amazing collaboration tools that uh, is powered by the cloud. And last but not least, we're also heavily invested in the fintech space, having been uh, providing some of these fintech technologies, uh, mobile payment technologies through WeChat Pay, now serving billions of users across uh, China and across the world. Now, if you look at this chart, this is also uh, representative uh, in a broad way at a high level in terms of what we bring to the market. Uh, we, you know, starting from the top, we have invested heavily from a smart vertical solution standpoint. So whether you are in the retail business, whether you are in healthcare, whether you, know, you are in education, finance, transportation, or even government sector, so on and so forth. We have invested heavily in this space. We have a lot of experience that we can help you to transform digitally. Now, if you kind of take that to the next level, we are able to then take building blocks from a software and a services standpoint and provide some of these building blocks to help you to transform according to the pace of your digital journey. Taking that a little bit further, we have underlying technologies. Again, building blocks that you can take and put into your environment, whether is it on-premise or whether is it running on the cloud. Technologies such as the AI toolkit, which can help you to power your digital business to the next level. And last but not least, from an infrastructure standpoint, we have invested heavily from an infrastructure level at a global scale. Uh, and again, we want to take a lot of this amazing global scale uh, infrastructure investment and we want to take that experience to you in Indonesia. Quick data point. We are, as I mentioned, we are the fifth largest cloud provider in the world. We have more than a million plus servers today in production already. We take security extremely seriously. Today, we have more than 70 plus recognized certification. We're growing aggressively, triple digit growth in the last couple of years. And last but not least, from a CDN standpoint, a content delivery network standpoint, today we have more than 2,800 plus global acceleration nodes. We have more than 300 plus products today. Again, you know, there are a lot of toolkits that we can take and help you to transform digitally. And again, rolling out a lot of these products and services at the global level, which will allow you to enjoy some of these services at the economies of scale level and ha thereby helping you to optimize your cost structure. We are well recognized by top global analyst firms such as Forrester, the Gartner Magic Quadrant, IDC, and last but not least, Frost and Sullivan. So again, many of these international uh, analyst companies have been validating us, affirming our position in the market, and uh, allowing us to solid solidify and to continue our pace of investment in this market. Now, quick notes of our global cloud infrastructure. So as I mentioned, we continue to invest heavily in this space, and today I'm very proud to share with all of you that in Indonesia, we have now announced our sec second data center, which will be live very soon. So we have two data centers based in Jakarta. We have two data centers in Bangkok, and in Singapore, we have four data centers. And across the world, you can see we have 26 regions and 69 availability zones. Now, from a network backbone standpoint, again, you would have seen that we have full redundancy global network backbone that spans at a global scale. And at the CDN standpoint, 
I'm also very proud to share with you today we have 800 plus nodes outside of mainland China and in China itself we have 2,000 plus nodes uh, in, in mainland China and again globally more than 2,800 nodes across 70 countries providing 200 terabits per second plus bandwidth at a global scale. Now let's go to this slide which uh, I think it's very interesting and I do want to spend some time to share with you our amazing stack of technologies that we can help you. Now, if you look at this slide, starting from the bottom, we have infrastructure as a service that we can help you. Again, you know, infrastructure as a service is a given for us. We operate our cloud services at scale at the global level. So regardless of your need at the infrastructure level, please let us help you because we can help you to optimize your cost structure. We can help you to take your infrastructure requirements to the next level with our global powered investment in our infrastructure in Indonesia. But what I also wanted to share with you are our building blocks. So Tencent Cloud provides many building blocks, be it AI services, IoT services, big data services, or even blockchain services, or even our video services. Now, I can go on and on. There are many building blocks that we can help you to transform digitally. So you do not need to worry about the nuts and the bolts from an infrastructure standpoint. We are able to provide you with many platform as a service products where you only need to focus on the user experience by building superb application powered by our platform. We also have the amazing ability for you to link up with our B2C platform. So in other words, if you would like to harness the power of our B2C platform, by combining that with our B2B platform, we are able to help you to build that B2B to C linkage. In fact, we coined the word C2B, consumer to business structure, where we're able to help you to harness the ability uh, to, to gain much more of a marketing insight to, uh, to users that are using WeChat and again, you providing public cloud services to serve these customers. Now, all of these products will not mean anything unless we have world-class security. So on the right-hand side, we have world-class security standards and products and services that we are able to help you to transform and ensure that you are meeting the highest and the most stringent standard from a security standpoint. Now, last but not least, I also want to mention about our investment and our experience from a vertical solution standpoint. So whether you are from the government sector, whether you are in banking finance, whether you are in uh, education, whether you are in retail, building or gaming business, so on and so forth. Tencent and Tencent Cloud has the experience to help you. We are able to take on many of the learnings and the, le the lessons that we are able to harness the last 22 plus years and bring that to your organization to help you in your digital transformation journey. Now, this is a, an example of how we, will, we are able to take on the various elements of our infrastructure, our platform as a service, our AI toolkit, and bring that together and apply that in a banking sector. If you look at this example, we have done some of these uh, and deployed a lot of these technology in China today including visual modeling, uh, text-to-speech technology, natural language processing technology, and building a avatar or digital human-powered AI chatbot that allows 24 by 7, 365 days type of customer experience services that will allow greater customer intimacy to be driven. And a lot of this has been deployed in the banking sector and we certainly are able to apply a lot of this experience across the various industry, certainly in the Indonesia market. Now, let me talk about security as well. Security is of the utmost importance for all our customers because without trust, there will not be any customers. So we do take security extremely seriously. When we look at security, we do not take just a piecemeal approach. We take a holistic approach. And that means, if you look at it from this uh, chart, you know, starting from data security, host security, 
risk control security, content security, network security, business security, mobile security, and also uh, security services to help you to be successful. Again, we look at this from a holistic angle, and we want to help you to engage not just Tencent Cloud security capabilities, but ensuring that as you work with the broader ecosystem, that you are also able to engage them holistically from a security standpoint, integrate these ecosystem resources back to our cloud infrastructure, and ensuring a complete ecosystem solution that is applied to solve your problem. We work with external auditors to audit us, right? In other words, we ensure that the highest compliance standards are adhered to. Organizations such as ISO, uh, Monetary uh, Authority of Singapore, the PCI DSS standard, for example, and OSPA, for example, have been giving us the very validation and the necessary certification to, inf to inform the rest of the industry that we have met the standards. And we will continue to invest heavily in this space to make sure that we're able to meet the strictest, the most stringent standard from a security and compliance st standpoint. Now, Tencent Cloud is in Indonesia, and we have set it up looking at how we can serve the Indonesia market better. Today, I'm very proud to share with you that thousands of enterprise customers in Indonesia have started to rely on Tencent Cloud for the digital growth. Companies like GeoX, Bank New Commerce from a financial standpoint, Astrindo, Jux, Bank Mega, Astron, just some examples of how Indonesia companies have been working with us, helping and, 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 and get and asking us to help them in that digital transformation journey. Great. So this is my last slide, and thank you for spending the last uh, 15 or so minutes with me. I wanted to just take a moment again to also share with you the broad-based Southeast Asia list of customers. Again, these are not the full list, but I, I do wanted to point out with, uh, for you that we have been working with large brand names like NTUC Income in Singapore. We've been working with large telcos like uh, China Telecom, Telecom Sigma, you know, Nanyang Telecom in Philippines. We've been working with large education institutions like NUS or National University of Singapore. We've been working with gaming companies, as I mentioned just now, with uh, the likes of GeoX in Indonesia. We've work, been working with small, medium businesses like Cat and Feeder in Singapore to large enterprise like Bank New Commerce in Indonesia. Again, we have the experience to help you. We want to take our amazing products and services to help you in your digital transformation journey. And in the next session, I'll be inviting my colleague, Brandon, who will be sharing with you our experience in gaming, in video, and in the banking sector. And with that, I do want to take a moment again to thank you once again, and also to our uh, coordinator, and as well as our special speaker. Uh, thank you once again, Talima Gassi. We really appreciate your time, and let's uh, move on to the next amazing topic. Thank you. Baik, luar biasa. Terima kasih atas penyampaian yang lengkap dan jelas dari Mr. Genetio, selaku Regional Director for Southeast Asia Tencent Cloud. Memerlukan waktu 15 menit, tapi menurut saya itu adalah sangat berguna buat kita semua. Dan seperti yang sudah disampaikan oleh Mr. Genetio tadi, selanjutnya akan kita dengarkan bersama pemaparan dari Mr. Mr. Brandon Fu ya, yang akan menjelaskan secara lebih detail Beliau adalah Business Development Lead di Singapura and Indonesian Tencent Cloud. Mr. Brandon, please you are you welcome. Silakan. Hi everyone, this is Brandon from Tencent Cloud. I'm extremely excited to be here today and I'm actually the Business Development Lead for Singapore and Indonesia. In my current role, I help customers, partners and vendors realize the benefits of cloud computing. I also lead the B2B Business Development and sales initiatives and also projects to help my customers achieve 
their business goals. Prior to joining Tencent, I worked for Salesforce and IBM, and I've actually also spent a short stint of time running my own data analytics startups, um, where we focus more you know, on deploying the right resources for the right customers in the right industry. Today, we have picked three key industries in Indonesia that we see booming locally. And first, let me tell you why. With more than 270 million people in Indonesia, one of the most populous countries in the Southeast Asia region, I think it's almost 43% of the entire total population in this particular region of 530 million people, where we also managed to observe that this country is in the forefront of the digital transformation wave. With a median age of 29 and also more than 60% of the country being under 40, technology adoption in Indonesia is also at an all-time high. This wave is further reinforced with the emergence of affordable smartphones like Oppo, Vivo, Xiaomi and many other brands. You also have some of the most exciting unicorns in the country like GoTo, Traveloka, Bukalapak, Ruang Guru, Kopi Kenangan and so many more that are actually disrupting the traditional ecosystem in the country. Back to my earlier point, the three industries that I will be sharing more about today are actually gaming, media and banking. First of all, let's move on to gaming. As an avid gamer myself, I'm always very, very excited to be sharing about this particular industry from the Tencent Cloud point of view. For those of you who do not know, Tencent is actually the world's largest gaming company by market revenue share. As depicted in the pie chart on the left side, left side of the slide, for every $100 spent in the video gaming industry, we actually get $43 or 43% out of it. We have also invested and partnered with major gaming corporations like Riot Games, Epic Games, Supercell, Netmarble, with key marquee games like League of Legends, PUBG Mobile, Clash of Clans, Crossfire, Free Fire, as what you can actually see on screen as well. Besides the three awards displayed here, Tencent have actually also won multiple awards in the gaming space. Now, let's move on to the building blocks for our gaming solutions. I really wanted to take this opportunity to actually share a little bit more about what are the essential ingredients in, to, to build a successful game. Given our years of experience in this industry, we have concluded that a stable infra platform is very essential in building successful games. Over here, we can see eight hexagonal boxes that are actually our infra pieces from Tencent Cloud. On the right side, we also have a wide array of vertical PaaS and SaaS services, you know, platform as a service, software as a service, both catered specifically for gaming. The two key points that I really wanted to highlight here are actually first, our content delivery network, or better known as CDN in the IT space, and also our anti-cheating uh, softwares that we have developed in-house. As a gamer, nothing annoys me more than bad latency, you know, super lagging issues, and in-game cheaters and bots. With our widespread of more than 2,800 CDN nodes across the globe, we are extremely confident in managing the gaming latency. That's the first point. And on the second point, cheaters and bots, detrimental, you know. So a lot of, you know, the cheaters and bots, when you are playing a game, you just feel so annoyed by them, so irritated by them because you have spent so much time training your character and now, you know, uh, they just come in with an extremely higher level than you, stronger weapons than you, and then you just lose to them in those games. And that is all um, discharged with the ability and the installation of our anti-cheating software. I also wanted to pick one of the very unique you know, use case uh, and also one of the most successful mobile games in the history of gaming, PUBG Mobile, which has be uh, actually became the top game in more than 105 countries. With over 100 million downloads and 20 million global daily active users, this has proven to be one of the most successful mobile games in the history. 
20 million daily active users. Imagine the scale. Imagine, you know, how, what, what is the level of infra stability that is required to actually support all these players on a global scale. This game is actually built using Tencent Cloud infrastructure and is also deployed in more than 70% of the world in more than five continents. Next, I'm also moving to the second industry, which is media. Uh, I would say, you know, an industry that is very close to my heart as well. We have identified Ten Tencent Online Video Platform, or better known as TOVP, to be one of the key cloud products for this sector. Imagine an all-rounded platform where your users, your customers, can actually log in with a single click. This particular platform also supports multiple OS systems ranging from smart TV, you know, um, Android and iOS for both mobile phones and tablets, personal computers, laptops, and also H5 and Hotmail uh, platforms. The seven pillars of success indicated in this particular slide for TOVP is also one particular sharing that I really wanted to you know, focus on. I wanted to talk more about our live streaming and VOD capabilities. For those of you who do not know what's VOD, it's actually our video on demand uh, product and feature where we are actually one of the leading cloud service provider in this particular space. We are also one of the top players in the Kodak space and what Kodak actually does is it helps us compress and decompress media content according to you know, your needs, your requirement, and also the particular situation that you're in. Besides these two that I've just mentioned earlier, TOEP also enables functionalities like news, information platform, interactive streaming, and advertisement business. A simple user-friendly full backend management system is also available for our users in, from the backend side. You know, all your engineers, your data analysts, it's actually very, very user-friendly and you know, if let's say uh, you want to try it out, you can actually go to our international portal, create an account, and you can actually uh, have a testing and a demo or a proof of concept uh, for free of charge. The last industry that I really wanted to talk about today is also, uh, is actually the banking and financial sector. Do you know that Tencent actually built the first digital bank back, you know, in 2015? It is called WeBank. What is the particular definition of you know, digi digital bank? You hear this buzzword outside you know, these days. People talk about blockchain, people talk about cryptocurrency, but what is a digital bank? A digital bank is a bank where there is zero physical branches and ATMs. Amazing, right? Yeah, so that is actually the definition of digital bank. In such a highly regulated industry, like the FSI, the institution are actually embroiled in a digital transformation uh, race where all of them, they aspire, they compete with each other to say like, hey, you know what? I'm a traditional bank. How do I prevent startups from disrupting my business? How do I stay ahead of my other top competitors in this particular space? You have the traditional banks like Bank Rakyat Indonesia, Bank Central Asia, Bank Mandiri, Bank Negara, from the earlier pool, traditional, been there for more than 50, 80, 90 years, you know, helping the local Indonesians, creating their first bank account from, you know, the, I would say the banking books to like digital banking, opening up uh, a digital banking account. But you also have on the other side of the world, the spectrum, the disrupt, I would say the fintech disruptor, startups like Ovo, Akulaku, Ling Aja, Payfast, Bibit, Ajay. Be it a stock brokerage platform or a payment gateway or a BNPL medium, buy now, pay later. We, act we are, can actually see a great surge of startup emerging from this industry. Right now, it is so easy to actually trade stocks. In the past two to three years, because of the COVID pandemic, people have started to venture more into trading, you know, what are the best stocks to buy, which startups are actually going to IPO and everything is made easier and seamless by the emergence of all such type of fintech startups as well. Here, we wanted to also dive deeper into this four segments that you can see in the slide on the right side. The first one, 
our digital transformation roadmap for the FSI. Why is this very important? Digital transformation is actually two of the words that are the most used in the 21st century. Everybody is talking about it. Like, hey, you know, uh, is your boss actually talking about digital transformation? What is your roadmap? Where do you envision yourself? And how is this important for the FSI? In the FSI space is actually when technology plays a very, very important role in enabling some of these um, other uh, features over there as well. The second, building a robust ecosystem. The ability and the experience of Tencent building a very successful ecosystem in China with WeChat, WeCom, QQ, Tencent Music, Tencent Videos, we are sort of, you know, um, the technology provider for a lot of functions, features, you know, we control the social media and WeChat as well. And we wanted to actually leverage on our expertise to help the banks, you know, to support these banks to build a robust ecosystem as well. The third point, data analytics. Why is data analytics so important? Data analytics uh, is, where, is an essential ingredient to actually help the banks to better understand their users, to better understand how much are they actually spending? What is the location? You know, what is their risk appetite? Then you can actually aim better, you can actually target better, you can actually sort of also know what packages, what banking packages to push or to actually uh, advocate for your current users. And last but not least, agility. Agility means speed. The speed to execute certain particular tasks that you know, your management team or your IT CTO has actually assigned to you. And you need to do it fast and correctly. If you want to fail, you have to fail fast. That, and that is what agility is all about. And with a cloud computing setup, we actually enable the scalability and also the flexibility in doing so. Next, I also wanted to talk about, you know, the strong technology foundations for the banks, the insurance firms, and also for the other fintechs. Coupled with a very, very strong technology foundation, we are here to actually explain and share a little bit more about the differences between the, a public cloud setup and also a private cloud setup. And what, how, how different are they? So over here, if let's say we focus on the former, which is the public cloud setup, Tencent Cloud has actually built up private financial zones you know, that have higher and more, uh, I would say safer, uh, higher security uh, financial zone, just uh, specifically catered for the financial institution. And on the right side, we can actually see uh, what we are doing as a private cloud deployment, where you know, we are using the same set of system architecture to build a private uh, cloud for, our, for the banks or for the insurance firms. And this particular setup can actually be present in the same office or a designated location by the customer. Security is also another very important factor that Tencent is highly focused in. Security is very, very important because, you know, in the banking world, everybody is concerned about their personal information being leaked to the market. And in Tencent, we have actually multiple security labs uh, positioned in different, side, uh, different parts of the world, just focusing on how do we bolster the level of security within Tencent. In my next slide, I would also wanted to tap on and also share a little bit more about the banking use case, Bank Neo Commerce, or previously known as Bank Yuda Bhakti. We have thousands of companies running on Tencent Cloud Indonesia presently. At the same time, we actually also have two data centers in the country located in the Jakarta region. Well, you know, it, we are primarily focused in the Java space at this moment, but we ha actually have the plan to actually expand our network. You know, we can build POPs, we can build edge solutions over there in other, uh, I would say, regions like, you know, Sumatra, Kalimantan, Papua, uh, or Sulawesi. Uh, but, you know, this is actually what we are aspiring to do, and we want to do better uh, for the country of Indonesia. Um, besides the, you know, the commitment that we have shown in investing Data, multiple data centers in the country, we have also introduced a localized Bahasa cloud console on our international website as a sign of our continued uh, commitment to this country. The first use case that I wanted to talk about here is actually GoX, the first Indonesian game, gaming uh, streaming platform 
and they have actually signed a memorandum of understanding for a four-year collaboration with Tencent Cloud. So what is GoX? GoX is actually the Twitch, you know, a gaming platform. Or if let's say you come uh, closer to um, the region, maybe some sort of uh, like Garena, Huya, Touyu. So they actually have the same sort of setup where they enable streamers, gamers, you know, all the same advocates in the, this particular industry to come together as a community and to discuss, you know, to learn from each, each other and to just get to know each other better. And this particular GoX platform is actually powered by uh, Tencent Cloud in, uh, and what we are very proud of is actually our live streaming experiences and features that we are able to execute with them. The second use case that I want to talk here is actually Bank Neo Commerce, like I've mentioned earlier, Bank Yuda Bhakti, previously known as Bank Yuda Bhakti, established in 1990. Bank Neo Commerce has actually transformed to be one of the leading digital banks in Indonesia. This particular initiative also marks the first TD SQL overseas deployment that is able to help BNC's development to capture new opportunities without hindrance in technology. And the result is this particular bank has actually managed to acquire more than 10 million users in six months and it is still growing very, very strongly. Well, with this, I would really like to end my session with some phrases in Bahasa and you know, you know, makasih semua. Mari kita bertumbuh bersama Tencent Club Indonesia. Jika ada sebarang pertanyaan, silakan hubungi saya kapan aja. You can see my email over here. Please feel free to drop me, you know, any questions if let's say you want to learn more about Tencent Cloud or if you have any specific inquiries regardless be it the gaming space, um, the media space or the banking space, I'm more than happy to be able, you know, uh, to help you hopefully. Thank you. Baik, terima kasih. Mr. Brandon Fu, Business Development Lead Singapore and Indonesian Tencent Cloud yang sudah kita dengarkan bersama isinya luar biasa. Dan kita sekarang memasuki sesi quiz seperti yang saya sampaikan di depan. Kita mempunyai tiga pertanyaan untuk tiga pemenang. Ya, Nanti akan membagi hadiah untuk tiga pemenang, masing-masing akan mendapatkan e-wallet sebesar Rp150.000. Caranya adalah menjawab pertanyaan yang saya sampaikan dan kemudian menulis di kolom chat ya dengan format namanya siapa, domisili domisilinya di mana dan jawaban atas pertanyaan itu apa ya. Pemenang akan kami informasikan setelah sesi konklusi sebelum acara kita akhiri. Dan sekarang saya akan mengajukan pertanyaan yang pertama, ya. Perhatikan baik-baik. Apa saja layanan yang dimiliki oleh Tencent Cloud? Sekali lagi, apa saja layanan yang dimiliki oleh Tencent Cloud? Gampang jawabnya. Dan pertanyaan kedua, sebutkan tiga sektor utama yang sedang berkembang di Indonesia. Kelunya adalah industri ini sudah disebutkan tadi dalam pemaparan oleh Mr. Brandon Fo, ya. Jadi sudah beliau sebutkan tadi. Jadi gampang sekali. Sekali lagi, industri apa yang sedang tiga sebutkan tiga sektor utama yang sedang berkembang di Indonesia. Kelunya adalah industri ini sudah disebutkan oleh Mr. Brandon Fo tadi. Ya. Lalu pertanyaan yang ketiga, ya apa itu UKM dan komunitas yang berani untuk share visi misi selama lima tahun ke depan. Jadi silahkan bagi UMKM dan komunitas untuk menyampaikan atau nge-share di volume ini visi misi selama lima tahun ke depan apa, ya itu. Jadi silahkan eh, ngecat di menjawab di kolom chat ya ada nama dari mana dan jawabannya apa. 150.000 untuk tiga pemenang. Dan saya ingin menyampaikan konklusi dari apa yang sudah disampaikan oleh tiga narasumber kita yang luar biasa, ya. Meningkatnya pengguna internet serta lalu lintas dan penggunaan big data mempengaruhi revolusi digital di Indonesia. Kondisi ini membuat Indonesia menjadi pangsa pasar yang potensial sehingga mulai maraknya ketertarikan investasi asing masuk ke Indonesia. 
dalam mewujudkan transformasi digital yang cepat ya diperlukan kolaborasi antara pemerintah, pelaku sektor bisnis swasta dan pemangku kepentingan lokal seperti masyarakat dan UKM tentu saja. Sebagai regulator, pemerintah mengelola rencana pembangunan government cloud dan juga mendorong pembangunan private cloud bagi perusahaan nasional Indonesia maupun investasi asing. Tencent Cloud hadir sebagai penyedia ya, penyedia layanan cloud publik dengan pengalaman lebih dari 20 tahun. Luar biasa. Dalam inovasi teknologi, fondasi infrastruktur yang kuat, dan jaringan pengiriman konten global yang luas. Tencent Cloud siap membantu pelaku bisnis dan organisasi mempercepat transformasi digital. Mari kita bekerja sama untuk bertransformasi dan memberdayakan ekonomi digital di Republik ini, di Indonesia. Ya, Itu dia kesimpulan yang bisa saya sampaikan dari tiga narasumber kita. Pak Usman Kasong, ya, dari dua dari Tencent, ya, yang terakhir tadi bahwa dengan jaringan yang sangat luas, kita bisa memanfaatkan teknologi ini. Dan saya akan tiba saatnya mengumumkan ini, yang paling ditunggu-tunggu ini. Akan mengumumkan tiga orang pemenang ya untuk mendapatkan hadiah ya hari kuis hari ini ya seratus lima puluh ribu rupiah dan hadiahnya adalah kami berikan kepada Febriana Agnes namanya mirip dengan saya kalau saya Febri Mahendra Putra pemenang yang pertama ini Febriana Agnes dari Magelang yang nomor dua adalah Kristin Putriani dari Bekasi dekat-dekat juga nih lalu yang ketiga dari agak jauh Lutfiana dari Yogyakarta luar biasa terima kasih dan selamat nanti eh, pemenang akan dihubungi oleh panitia jangan khawatir jangan khawatir nanti akan dikirim 150.000 lumayan baiklah Bapak Ibu dan saudara segala sekalian kita sudah sampai di penghujung acara saya mengucapkan terima kasih sekali lagi kepada Bapak Usman Kansong, Direktur Jenderal Informasi dan Komunikasi Publik Kementerian Komunikasi dan Informatika. Berikutnya adalah kepada Mr. Kenetsio, Regional Director for Southeast Asia Tension Cloud. Dan yang terakhir adalah Mr. Brandon Fu, Business Development Lead in Singapore and Indonesia Tension Cloud. Saya juga menyampaikan ucapan terima kasih kepada tribunnews.com. Dan yang terakhir serta yang saya hormati adalah seluruh komunitas yang sudah berpartisipasi dalam kegiatan hari ini. Ya, dan sebelum mengakhiri acara webinar hari ini, izinkan saya Febi Mahendra untuk menyampaikan pantun penutup. Moga-moga nanti ada yang menyaut ya terkait ketika saya ingin menyampaikan pantun ini. Minuman dingin dicampur biji terasi. Cakep. Jadi teman setia di tengah perjalanan. Zaman sudah berubah makin canggih. Jangan sampai kita ketinggalan. Ya, yeah. Lagi satu lagi. Ambil buah mangga pakai galah. Galah terbuat dari bambu dirangkaikan. Maafkan hamba manakala banyak salah. Salam taksin buat tuan dan puan sekalian. Saya Febi Mahendra Putra. Selaku host. Di acara pada hari ini menyampaikan terima kasih atas semua partisipasi dari partisipan. Saya pamit undur diri. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom, om santi santi om, namo buddhaya, dan salam kebajikan. Kita bertemu lagi di series di hari berikutnya. Salam sehat dan jangan lupa bahagia.